Hey everybody, how are you? I'm so excited. I got a yummy recipe for you tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and share this into my, my VIP page, so bear with me. This is my computer will let me do it. So I was gonna do this last night, but did not have a chance to. So we're gonna do it tonight. And I'm gonna pop this right in my VIP page so those of you on my VIP page can see this too. I am going to make a very, very yummy soup. Hey, I mean, let's face it, it's cold, it's rainy, it's snowy, it's drizzly, it's yucky. And I like heat. I like things that are quick and easy to put together. I like things that are gonna keep me warm like things that I can have leftovers for lunches. So yeah, we're gonna make some soup tonight. So some really, really yummy taco soup. So some of this, like I said, I wanted to do it last night and I didn't get a chance to, so I'm gonna, some of it I already, kind of already started, but it's so easy. You can take a basic taco soup. You don't need a huge recipe. You just need to think about the things that you like in tacos and modify that to go into a soup. So I'm gonna turn just a little bit here, so don't get seasick on me, okay? I know it's like really kind of weird. I hate having to turn this. All right, so I've got my Rock Crock Dutch oven, and you know me, this is one of my favorite pieces. The Rock Crock is made from a proprietary blend of clay, natural clay made right here in the US, and it is amazing, heat safe, up to some like 720 degrees. You can put it in the oven, on the stovetop, doesn't matter if it's gas or not, uh, gas or electric smooth. I got a smooth cooktop I use it on the, get on the cooktop. You can pop it in the uh, microwave. You can pop it on the top of the grill. You can use this on the grill. Oh my gosh, yeah. So anywho, so we're gonna use this today. I'm gonna pop a little bit of water in the bottom of there. I don't use oil to saute. I use water or a veggie broth. So I'm gonna turn this on to a medium heat. And I always do that, I always reach for the back one. Medium, right there. All right, so while that's gonna heat up a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and prep my onion and my pepper. I have just a yellow onion. I'm not gonna use the whole thing, I'm gonna use part of it. And I have an orange pepper, and I've got some roasted red peppers too, just for some flavor. We've got some diced fire roasted tomatoes. We have some veggie broth, and then I've got all kinds of seasoning and spices, because we're gonna make some taco seasoning from scratch because I'm almost out and that's not enough to make this soup. So we're gonna go ahead and make us some taco seasoning tonight too. So while I'm at it, let's go ahead and get this started. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and cut the top off and the bottom. And I'm gonna cut. And y'all know I do not waste any bits. That all goes into my little plastic bag that I will use for making more veggie broth this weekend. So I'm gonna go ahead and dice this up. I like the color that the orange and the yellow peppers give. We use red peppers a lot. They're nice and sweet, but I still like the colors that the red peppers give, or that the orange and yellow peppers give. It's just different, you know? It's not the same orange as a carrot. So I'm just gonna dice this up a little bit. I don't need much, just the end and the top and I cut around and the rest of this is gonna go into one of a uh, plastic bag. I'm gonna take a little bit more and then I'm gonna put that in a container and store that. Um, we take, I make hummus or sometimes we'll buy hummus and I do like cucumbers celery and pepper sticks and put it in our lunches for snacks and with a little bit of roasted red pepper hummus and I like to keep them ready to go so usually Sunday is my meal prep day so Sunday I'll take time and I'll just prep all of our lunches for the week and all of our snacks for the week all of our breakfast for the week because I do a um, an overnight oats usually and that way it's all in the fridge ready to go. All I gotta do in the morning is just grab and go. It works like a charm, like a charm. All right, so I set that aside. 
I'm gonna chop up a little bit of my onion. And again, even the onion skins and garlic skins goes right in my plastic bag in the freezer. I just keep it right there, ready. And I just keep stuffing it. And when the bag is completely full, then I'll make veggie broth. Um, just add in a bay leaf or two or three, depending on the size of bay leaf. And if you have any particular spices that you like in your veggie broth, you can add them then. You can do your veggie broth either in the multi cooker, uh, pressure cooker, or you can do it slow on the stove all day long and it just smells so good. So very yummy. All right. Now, I like using my Santa Cruz knife. A lot of people prefer other ways. Pampered Chef has got probably 27 different ways that you can chop an onion. Um, and I prefer using a knife but you can do whatever is in your comfort zone. Accident cut all the way through, didn't wanna do that. So you do whatever works for you. And uh, that's what I like about it because it's- You can play specific songs with Amazon Music Unlimited. I don't know what I, where I said Amazon in there. Hey, Michelle. Amazon. Stop. I have no idea what I said that sounded like Amazon. We have another one. We got four of them. We got out for them. So there's only four names that you can use. They don't let you choose names. I did not hear you. Would you like to say Amazon? Stop. Here's a station called based on the song Wait for I think future. she's drunk. Future Amazon Ray is drunk. On Amazon, Music. Amazon. Stop. <laughs> she's not stopping. She's going to some explicit stuff. I don't know what it is. I don't want it. It just said explicit, so I don't want to hear it. So y'all are my witness. I didn't say anything wonky. It was going nuts. All right. So we got our onions in there and our rock crock putting my peppers in there and we're going to saute those for a couple. I like this is one of our cheap wooden um, bamboo spoons or wooden spoons and I like this one because it's got a nice flat bottom. I can get all the way around the bottom of that pan without having to angle. It's like a shovel. One of the things I also did yesterday was I made my beans in advance. So I have in here, I have some black beans and I have some kidney beans that I cooked in the multi cooker. The kidney beans take 10 minutes once it comes up to temperature and that takes about five, about five minutes for something like that. So no more soaking. I don't have to soak them overnight. I don't have to rinse them. I have to boil them, rinse them again and simmer for a while. It's just literally rinse them pop them in there with some water and enough to cover. I usually like to cover them by about two inches just to make sure, because you know, beans are gonna swell up. And as they swell, they'll come up through the top of that water really, really easy. So I like to make sure I have at least two inches of water above the top of the bean. So I did my black beans and my kidney beans and they're all ready to go. Now the black beans take 25 minutes with about a five minute uh, ramp up time for pressure. So that's it. That's so easy to do. And whatever, like I said, whatever you like on your tacos. Now I'm going to just get those, just starting to get translucent those onions. And I'm going to add a little bit of garlic. Everybody loves garlic. If you don't, I'm sorry. I love garlic. And we go through a lot of garlic. <laughs> Sometimes I buy a little bit more than I actually should and then it kind of starts growing, but you know what? I'll use it anyway. I don't care. Oh, hubby's coming in for a cup of coffee. Nope. Oh, yep. <laughs> I guess that right. Okay, so who thinks he needs to be in here cooking with me again? So give me a big shout out. I need to get hubby to cook with me. He needs to be doing demos again. That was fun. If y'all didn't get to see that, you missed because he's hilarious in the kitchen. All right, so now keep an eye on it. Anytime you saute with water, you wanna make sure that you keep a little handy so you can top it off if you need to. 
And those garlic skins are gonna go right in my bucket, or right in my bag. So, I'm gonna take those, put that stir, just a tad. I'm gonna get my trusty garlic press, which I absolutely love. This is like the last garlic press I am ever gonna have to buy, unless I break it and I have to buy a new one, because this is like no other. It's got a nice weight to it, and a generous well, and it comes with this cool little, Arnie calls it Barbie brush, that you can use to get your garlic out. And you don't even have to peel your garlic. You can put your garlic right in here, peel and all, and it will still mince it. It's beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna add this real quick. And we know garlic has a lower burn point than onions do. That's why you don't wanna ever put your garlic in at the same time that you put your onions. You know, let your onions really start cooking first then you can add your garlic okay so i'm going to take the handle part of that little brush that little tool and scrape off my garlic then i'm going to open her up and you see there's garlic bits down in there you turn it over and you're going to take the brush and you're going to line up all those little holes i'm going to turn it right line up those holes right with the holes in the bottom of your garlic press and here's what happens it pushes all those forward so that now all you need to do is take the handle and scrape it right out. And then that goes right into the pot. Because that's gonna cook right down anyway. And rinse it off before your garlic dries because you know garlic, dried garlic, that sugar in the in the garlic juice dries like concrete. We're gonna rinse, rinse. There we go. really smells good with those onions and the, and the pepper. I don't have you put spices in here yet. This is just the onions and the pepper and the garlic. Oh, yum. Yeah, garlic facial. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so those are good. The onions are nice and translucent. And you can see that. Isn't that gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm gonna turn that down just a tad because I don't want it to get too, too hot. Now, the next thing we're gonna, do, we're gonna do is we're gonna add our spices. Now, I get a problem. I don't have any more made up, and this is my homemade taco seasoning jar. So we're gonna make some more taco seasoning. This is really, really simple. Very simple to do. And you can do it to your tastes, so. Give that another stir. I'm going to add a little bit more water to the bottom. There we go. So one of the things about Rock Crock, it will hold heat very nicely. So you don't need to use super, super high heat to get things to cook. Even searing in the bottom of it, you don't need super high heat. So always go a little bit lower than what you think you need and work up as you need to. And then you can drop it back down. All right, so let's get this opened up because I'm just gonna dump it right in there. We're gonna mix it in the bowl and use what we need, and then we'll put the rest right into the bin. So I'm gonna start with ground cumin, and I'm gonna use about three tablespoons, because we're gonna make a lot. I use this a lot, and I like doing my own because there's no salt, absolutely none. So, and when I say three tablespoons, I mean heaping tablespoons of cumin. It's like, Smells yummy, smells yummy. All right, I'm gonna do dark chili powder. And we're gonna do two tablespoons. And we're gonna set that aside. And then you can adjust this. Once you get it all done and you get it all mixed up, you smell it. And if it doesn't smell like your favorite, then you can change it up, okay? That's why I used to go by, I used to not ever measure any of it. I just used to go with it until it smells right. So onion powder, I'm gonna use just about a tablespoon. And that is this one. And I had two. I like to use the onion powder versus that granulated onion. Oop, garlic, that's not need garlic, the 
glass of that one. And I have just a little bit less. It's about a half a teaspoon. I don't want it to taste too, too garlicky, but I want to get a little flavor in there. Let me stir real quick. Beautiful. So I don't want to put any wet ingredients in here yet until we get the spices in, because I want to heat those spices up and really kind of make them a little bit more aromatic. Once that heat hits them and they start cooking, they start releasing that aroma, then you can add your wet ingredients. So next I'm gonna add a little bit of oregano leaves. I know it sounds crazy, right? You think Italian, no, oregano. Uh, there's a lot of oregano used in Mexican food. So I'm gonna add about a teaspoon. Like I said, I don't typically measure this. I eyeball it and when it smells right, that's when I go with it. Okay, now paprika. I'm gonna add a good tablespoon. Now, if you don't mind and you want to do salt, you can certainly do salt. That's entirely up to you. Um, some people add a little bit of cornstarch in theirs. I typically do not. I know people who add sugar. I don't do that either. And sometimes it's not going to be as red as what you might see in the package. Um, Sometimes that red is food coloring and sometimes it's not really spices. So really, if you're using packaged uh, taco seasoning, really read that label. If it's not where you want it, if you want it a little darker red, add a little bit more paprika or a little more chili powder, it's not gonna hurt a thing, which we all know not all chili powder is created equal either. So some of it's lighter than others and some of it's darker. I'm gonna add about another three quarters of a tablespoon just because I can smell it's not where I'm usually at. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna give it another stir. And you can see what I've got in here is a little bit more red than what we have here. I'm gonna put some on top because we're all gonna mix it together. So you can see that difference. So we're gonna add some more paprika. All right. It's almost there. It's almost there. I'm going to add another tablespoon and a half. And this can be, like I said, anything you want it to be. You can, you have control. You can make it what you like. If you don't like oregano in yours, don't cut oregano, but I guarantee you it really makes it a good flavor. All right. So that's good for me. I'm good with that. Yep, that's it. So we're going to add what I have left in here. And then I'm going to set that aside because I'm going to wash it and fill it. And I'm going to add another heaping tablespoon. And I'm going to stir that up a little bit. I just want those spices to start getting warm and aromatic. It takes barely a minute. This way they're gonna start cooking and they're not gonna taste raw. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Okay, we're gonna do a splash of water. It's so tired. And then we're gonna put in our beans. Now, I'm not gonna drain my beans, I'm, or my beans, ah! My tomatoes. My tomatoes, my fire roasted tomatoes. I love fire roasted tomatoes. And this is, I don't normally buy cans, but I've been buying cans more often because I like fire roasted tomatoes. So this summer, my mission is to grow enough of my own tomatoes that I can make my own fire roasted tomatoes and take care of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that right in, just like it is. And one more because we're gonna make a this is gonna make a good batch. This um, rock crock Dutch oven holds quite a bit, and I want to make sure that I have enough left for soups for um, for lunches. So, Ooh, oh, oh, yum yum. The other thing I'm gonna add in here tonight too is green chilies. I like green chilies. 
I'm from the Midwest. We do lots and lots of green chilies. So this is our can opener. If you've not seen this magic can opener, I'm gonna tell you it is magic. I love this thing. I didn't understand the height because like I said, I normally didn't do canned goods, but OM to the G. I fell in love with this can opener when I did, when I first got it. I even opened a really, really, really super large can with it just to see if it would hold up and it cut right through. It's a little slower than a regular can, but like butter and no sharp edges whatsoever. The can goes in between the gear and the wheel. And this is, you can do this either hand, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna pop that. there what I do okay I'm gonna do this I'm just gonna look at this so when you turn it it engages the can it closes a lot closer to the can and it'll ride right in there and it'll cut right off the top of the lid okay so when you want to take it out you back it up the other direction and it releases so we're gonna put this on the can I'm gonna turn it clockwise and I'm gonna turn it all the way around. And like I said, you can do this either hand, okay? Right-handed or left-handed, either one, it doesn't matter. It still has to go clockwise, so that's the only thing. <laughs> all right, when you feel that tension release just a little bit, you can go backwards and it takes right off. Now, there's a little set of teeth right here. I can see those little teeth. You're gonna put that right on the top of the lid Push the button right here on the top. Oop, let me get over here where you guys can see me. Push that button right there and lift right up. And there is your lid. And literally, no sharp edges whatsoever. It is the bomb diggity. No sharp edges here. It's perfect. I'm gonna pop these right in here too. Cause I like some green chilies. All right, so there is that. Now we're gonna add our beans. And because Hubby and I are whole food plant-based, I have some, instead of using beef or chicken or pork, I'm going to use a plant-based kind of a burger blend. And we're gonna pop this in there instead of beef or chicken. And it's gonna be really yummy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. It's cold, it's been in the fridge. <laughs> so we're gonna break that up a little bit. And then I'm gonna add in my beans. So we got black beans and kidney beans both. That we cooked up yesterday. So we're gonna give that a stir. Kinda move things around. I'm gonna see if I can get you guys a little I can get you guys a little closer or not. Oop. That was almost a tetastery. I don't think I can. So, let me see if I can turn it. All right. All right, that looks good. Just about. Get those other pieces broken up a little bit. And they'll break up a little bit more as it cooks. We're gonna go ahead and add next our homemade veggie broth. I have four cups of homemade veggie broth. Oh, I almost forgot my, fat or my uh, roasted red peppers. I wanna add those in too. So here's our veggie broth. And this is, like I said, this is homemade. This is just for my veggie scraps. You can use chicken broth you can use beef broth let's see it's not going to even use all of it oh yeah we will yeah we will it'll fit it'll fit all right so we're going to stir that up a little bit and then i'm going to let it simmer you want to cover it you can cover it now if you like your taco soup thicker wait till it comes up to a nice simmer and then you can add in some, um, if you wanna do a little flour and water, 
or if you want to do uh, cornstarch, you can do that. Whatever works for you and your kitchen, however you like to thicken um, your soups and stews, you can do that. You can use um, this whole wheat flour. Um, I've seen folks use mashed potatoes. And that's a great tip too. When you're making soup, if you've got potatoes in your soup, cut some of your potatoes smaller so that they cook faster and they will disintegrate into the soup and actually help make your soup a little thicker. Oh, these are like some really tender peppers falling right apart. So we're just gonna give them a little rough chop and we're gonna pop them right in there. Yum. Yum, 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 yum. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. All right. I kind of made a mess over here, but I'm going to bring you over to see this. So here, hang on with me just a second. Sorry, guys. All right. Look at that. Yummy, 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 yummy. Isn't that amazing? Just absolutely amazing. Let's see if I can turn you around. I don't think I can do them live. I don't think I can. Oh, there we go. There we go. So there's our soup. Okay, it's all in there. It's gonna simmer. I'm gonna let it simmer for, until it's hot at least. I mean, you can serve it right away as soon as it's hot or you can let it simmer on really, really low you know, if you're Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening or whatever, and you've got a house full coming, you can go ahead and take some um, corn tortillas and cut them in strips and bake them in the oven and serve those on top. You could serve, make up some guacamole. If you like sour cream, you could do sour cream, whatever you want to top it with. And it's really easy. Make your soup what you like. So use your favorite taco seasoning and make it the way you want it to. All right, so there is, sorry, I hope I didn't make anybody car sick there. Motion sick. All right, so that's all there is to it. That's easy peasy way to throw together a taco soup really quickly. It didn't take us very long. And I mean, I had some things done ahead, but you can use those canned beans if you do canned beans you could if you have canned beans on hand you could do that canned beans canned tomatoes um, whatever veggies you've got I've seen people throw in carrots and celery you could certainly do that because your seasoning is going to be your taco that's going to be that's where you're going to get your taco flavor from so we're going to let this roll and I will see y'all later thanks for joining me see you later bye bye